neuroscientist Charles Spence has recruited some willing volunteers for an unusual multi-sensory feast. He's taken his science out of the lab and is going to attempt to trick a group of trainee chefs who rely on their senses more than most of us. OK, you've got four coloured drinks in front of you. Um, and what I want you to do is to taste each one uh, and try and figure out what the flavour is. The colours and flavours of the drinks have been mismatched, resulting in a certain degree of confusion. And here, just looking at some of the um, expressions on the faces, you can see kind of confusion and puzzlement. One of the people thinks that the yellow drink is apple. It was actually strawberry. And the red one, they smell like berries, but in fact was, was lemon. I think the um, green one tasted um, more of lime, like lime cordial or something like that, rather than mint. OK, excellent. Uh, green lime. So it's completely lost the peppermint flavour and it's been completely driven by the eyes. The light green actually reminded me of uh, green washing up liquid rather than mint. Ladies convinced it's washing up liquid smell. <laughs> and that expectation, knowledge that comes from names, from labels, from colours, from textures, from ways of presentation. Our brain's using it all the time to tell us what the flavour is. People will talk about you eating, you, know, uh, you eat with your eyes. It's probably much more true than uh, we realise. So it's impossible to separate what we see from what we taste. But what may be even more surprising is that when it comes to what you eat, your ears may be just as important. This time, the chefs are eating crisps. But they are also hearing the sound of their own crunch via headphones. But what they don't realise is the noises they hear have been changed. When they hear low frequencies, they are tricked into thinking the crisps are significantly less crunchy than when they hear higher frequencies. When anyone thinks about flavour, the first sense they think about is just taste. And then uh, to think about it a bit more, some people will say, well, I suppose smells in involved too. Uh, then they start, possibly if pushed, they'll say, well, maybe colour's got something to do with it. Uh, and finally, kind of a bit of texture. Is it soft and slimy or crispy or crunchy? But virtually no one ever thinks about sound. The results show hearing can have a significant effect on taste. Just playing higher frequencies makes people believe crisps to be over 15% crispier. But all this culinary trickery has even more insights to offer. The reason these tricks work is because it's impossible to separate one sense from another. It's experiments like these that have enabled scientists to piece together a revolutionary new understanding of the brain. The traditional view uh, was that we have five senses on the outside uh, and the eyes connected to one bit of the brain, your ears connected to a different part of the brain, uh, your skin to somewhere else, so each sense had its own little bit of brain. Uh, what we find now is that, in fact, the eye is talking to the ear almost as soon as those signals get from the eye and the ear into the brain. So from very early on, uh, there's multi-sensory interactions at work. Scientists are saying there is no such thing as a visual brain, there's no such part of the brain that's just doing hearing. All of the brain is multi-sensory, all of the brain is combining all the different senses uh, all the time. So it turns out we are all far more similar to synesthetes than we've realised. It's clear we should no longer think of our senses as working independently, but as working together as one. It's a discovery that has truly revolutionary possibilities. Mm -hmm.